find. So, okay, so uh, I'm Yasmin, uh, you lead on this because I know uh, Yasmin, you were project leader on this, uh, in this team. So uh, tell us about how this all happened. Uh, well, to me, it all started as a coincidence, actually. I heard by a friend that there was this hackathon and that it was a great opportunity for us to be um, more a part of AI in this community. Uh, and this, it all started like that. And we gathered up uh, in a local AI community association in our town. Uh, so we were three teams. Uh, each team, uh, of course, chose a, a different problem to work on and a different project. Uh, our team uh, had this uh, special pro project to uh, help young girls in Syria who are in the part from going to school because of several reasons. Uh, yes, and the objective was to help them to learn online uh, via a platform that uh, that gets. Uh, that understand the learning styles for each uh, individual. Amazing. And where did the inspiration come from? How did it um, how did it all start? You have been given six different challenges ranging from climate change to education to diversity to you know poverty um, inequalities, you name it, uh, mental health as well, and you decided to stick with that. Um, was there a particular reason? Uh, well, actually, if I if I can mention a reason, it's because this case is particularly particularly deep to, uh, and meaningful to me uh, as a female and uh, as someone who sees people every day, uh, girls especially struggling to learn and struggling uh, for getting their rights uh, to be equal with the other other children or other other males. So it was, yes, it was a very important thing to me to address this problem. Uh, and because I see, I see young girls uh, struggling every day. So it was something uh, that needed to be solved for me. So you mentioned uh, a project to understand different learning styles. So mm -hmm. different ways that, that people are, are successful in learning. Um, what were did, what were some surprises or some things that you learned uh, along the way as you as you were doing this project? Well, you know the thirteen of us. Well, many of the thirteen of us, like um, how I'm gonna say this. A lot of the kids here in Syria actually got into this program like with barely any uh, background knowledge of technology or design thinking or anything like that, and. Um, you could clearly see they were very happy and puzzled to be there. They learned so, especially us. I mean, um, they learned so much. And for me, it was more about the business side of things. You know, I learned what, what a business model is and how you could know what your customers are and how could you define the scope of your project. And you know, if if I want to tell every part of it, I I would really finish now, so I could really pass this on to someone else. But I would like to mention that uh, if I'm going to say a surprise, well, uh, I guess that traditional learning styles are really need to be changed. And by the surveys we have done, I figured out that there is really a different way for everyone to learn. And uh, you can't teach everyone by the same rules and by the same uh, ways and uh, methods. It's, it's almost impossible. So the surveys are really helpful uh, in that matter. And uh, we found out that there are actually many people who like to see things, who like to hear things. Some people who write, like to write and read out loud. Uh, more people than that. Me personally, I enjoy visual learning and I understand more by seeing shapes and forms. Uh, I for example, I don't know. <laughs> Yes, so it is actually very helpful to know a learning style to detect a way of education for the future. That's great. So what's the next step? How do we take this work and bring it to, to the people and who, who need the help? Uh, well, to reach your audience, first we're going to start with the local audience here and say, because, you know, with each project, you've got to test it on more small kind of audience, study how successful it is, and then you scale it up. So, well, 
uh, one step would be if we could team up with some kind of organization that works in the field of um, a human rights and, and sustainable development goals, we could hook you up to these, um, you know, these women in need. And then does your product out and then and get feedback. Then we could scale this project up to more, let's say, to the whole MENA area. Did uh, any of you think five or six years ago that you would be working on artificial intelligence projects? No, no, no. <laughs> not a single second. No, it's hard. It's a really exciting time to be yeah. in the, the field of technology. I, uh, um, I obviously, when I started my career in technology, things were very, very different. Uh, and so I feel like today as we're moving into machine learning and data science as being the next frontier of, of innovation and growth, I feel like I'm personally learning a lot more now. Uh, I feel like I'm being stretched and developed as I spend time with this. I, I'm curious, so how do you see your personal path after this? So, so what do you hope to accomplish? Um, personally or professionally uh, as a next step beyond this, this project? Well, let me just start out by saying the, you know, you mentioned how back in your day, things were much different. The thing is with uh, the internet being more available for everyone, uh, you know, part of why we're actually here is the hackathon happened to be online because of the COVID pandemic. So that's what gave us the opportunity to be here. Part of the, the thing that information now is so easily accessible, all you, all you need is just the right mindset to learn and resources are just there. And you know, one of the best, best things that happened to me personally was I found the right um, community here in Syria, which is led by Hassan. Uh, and it helped me a ton to find all those opportunities and, you know, learn, connect and make. Uh, to me, this opportunity was a way to connect uh, with the rest of the globe, actually, because it's one of the uh, one of the first time for me actually uh, to to reach out to people from outside from Britain, uh, and uh, actually it it it's kind of, it was kind of my even my start in knowing anything about AI. So I'm now pursuing uh, a medical career. And I'm hoping to be able to develop uh, this kind of career with knowing more about AI and more about the applications of AI in medicine, uh, which is, okay, uh, AHOM is kind of teaching me some things about it now. Well, also my friend here, Jafar, probably has something yes. to say. You just have to repeat the question because we only have three days, so. Uh, hi. Yeah. Yeah. What's the big dream? I was just asking, uh, what do you hope to do with in your career? So what's what's next for you as you yeah, move on? I, I love the local image so much. I need to, I need oh no, I think we lost. Uh, yes, I think. That what maybe... a great way to start my week. This is so fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. I was going to ask them to ask you questions as, as well, but um, we seem to have lost. I'm available answer. for the next 40 minutes, so we can keep trying. Oh, really? Oh, that's so kind of you. Thank you so much, Aaron. Yes, like oh, I said last time, it took us better special. than anything else I'm doing today. <laughs> <laughs> I was also going to ask you to tell us your story, how you got into tech, you know, and being some, someone so senior uh, mm. at Sage and just in the world of technology, I think it would be such an exciting story for them to hear. Let's see if we can get them so, back. It's not as inspiring as their story, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that, you know, events like this, sometimes it's literally only, you know, even an hour or a day of inspiration uh, and it really sparks uh, hello hi hey. Hassan, sorry we lost you can we get you back on <laughs> on this call actually so, the, the electricity is off so uh, they will continue from my laptop yeah so uh, i will give him the uh, camera now yeah yes 
Give me one so, minute. Where in Syria are, are you calling in from? Um, it's a place called Latakia, I think. Um, it's not even. I want to look it up in Google Maps here. You can Google it up, yes. Um, and let me see if I can um, share with you. It's not even in Damascus, that's the thing. It's. Um, um, so they have been struggling with electricity. I remember um, mm. literally the day before they were meant to submit projects, um, one of the team members from another team uh, said to me, Oh, Elena. Our code is with a member whose village got burned and they don't even have any Wi Fi and electricity. He said, okay, we can send you a GitHub link to it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hi, guys. Good to have you back. And um, are you connected again to us? Can you hear us okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. So, Jafar, sorry. Um, it got interrupted. Please continue. Uh, yes. Uh, as uh, you said, I like blood. Let me go say, I don't know. It's a best to be look. Let me go. Like, what I for the moon is a Pakistan, I am from as a AI, as a very useful at the intellectuality. So I would to continue learning about the AI. Really inspiring listening to you guys. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Uh, being in Syria, uh, you're in a very difficult uh, part of the world where there's a lot of conflict and there's a lot of turmoil and and challenge. And uh, it's very humbling for me to talk to people like you who, in the midst of all of that conflict and turmoil, you're able to have a smile on your face and it actually made our day to be able to speak to someone like you and and it's, it's actually a rare opportunity for us to be able to speak to anyone actually but we would like to take that opportunity to thank you to thank you all oh. to thank people in the at teens and ai for giving us this uh, chance yes it is a rough time but we we try to keep a smile on our faces because it's the only thing that we can do at the moment so i've got uh, kids that are children that are your age. Uh, what would you say to my kids, you know, to give them some idea of, of you know, what, what would you tell an American kid about Syria that you would want them to know? Um, well, there's a lot you can say, but, you know, mainly, you know, these this, uh, parts of the world, like Syria, our voices never really heard on a global level. So, well, you should really take nothing for granted. But no matter how difficult it may be and no matter how impossible it may seem, it's, you really can do it if you put your mind to it. And um, there's, there's lots of reasons why you, may, you might wake up one day with you know, your whole country being in conflict like it happened to us. But, you know, we don't really want to get into the political side of things. So, you know, just focus on yourself, be nice to everyone, be positive, and never stop working. Uh, to me, I would say that uh, don't don't take anything you see online about, uh, about the Middle East seriously, because we know that sometimes we may not look our best, uh, on the media, but actually there are young people out here. Uh, they are very nice. They want to learn about AI. And yes, they are like any other children in, other in the world. Just question everything you see yes. online. Don't, yes. Don't trust <laughs> and yes, we would like to it's learn a lot more than we are able to learn right now. I love it. Uh, Elena said it might be helpful for me to tell you my story. Um, yes how I got into technology. And I was telling her, I, I think my story is not very exciting versus yours. Uh, 
But I'll tell you the one thing that uh, has been very important to me my, my entire career, which is that I'm doing what I love to do. Uh, I started programming when I was 12 years old. Uh, when I first uh, got my hands on a computer when I was 12, I fell in love uh, and it's never really stopped. Um, and what I found was that as long as I was curious and as long as I was exploring and as long as I first and foremost was pursuing doing, you know, coming up with the right answers, the right solutions, creating the right design, everything else just worked. As long as I was really pursuing what I loved to do and I, I had an honesty and an integrity about it. Uh, that's worked for me. Uh, it, it's just a matter of just doing what you love to do and being passionate about it. I think uh, Susanna, we've, we've worked together for a few years. I've watched her grow her career. And I think we probably share that same belief that as long as you're passionate and excited and have this uh, intense curiosity, uh, this, this desire to learn, your path will be a good one as long as you stay true to that. Uh, definitely. Well, even if it, uh, your career wasn't so exciting after all, but ours, <laughs> okay, you, you got to do the things you love and that's the most important thing. And uh, the thing with, with us Syrians is that our path is full of surprises. So you, you really don't know what's coming up next. It's all exciting. And yes, we hopefully aim to do the thing that we love the most. What's the, um, what's the biggest challenge that you face uh, to, to keep growing and learning with AI? Uh, definitely the lack of uh, the, you know, since you we're working with technology, then the lack of infrastructure is the biggest challenge you can face. You know, and not having a stable, fast internet connection or not having even electricity is something that could really you know, give you a strong kick. But yeah, we keep on going. It's, it's, it's quite difficult, but you know, challenges are fun. That's all I'm gonna say. Well, that's the best source of innovation. You know, innovation doesn't come from complacency. It comes from, it, it comes from need. It comes from having to solve very difficult problems when, and I would wager that this period of time in your part of the world is going to produce some exceptional people. It's going to produce some exceptional innovation because you are, you are in, in, a, in an environment where the very best can, can emerge. And I think that's the challenge. Uh, uh, this, I think this is, relates to, to COVID as well, to this pandemic we can use this to make a better world, right? We've got the opportunity through this, this difficult situation to build better technology, to use technology to solve problems. But if we're not careful, it can also further divide us, uh, can further divide, you know, the, what we call the, the digital divide can be made worse. And so I, I, I seriously hope that the world makes the kind of investments that it needs uh, in infrastructure, especially to support education and places like Syria, uh, because the world will see it produces exceptional people as a result, uh, which, which can only make the world a better place. Well, thank you. Thank you at least for believing in that. And that's enough for us to start working, that someone actually believes that ex ex exceptional people can come out of this country. And we are really thankful for every opportunity that we can have. Thanks for taking some time with me today. This was a great way for me to start my week. Thank you. We have Kaftan exactly. Thank you so much. Call. Um, Kaftan, I know you haven't uh, said anything yet. Um, your sister, I know, is not with you. I can't see her. But is there anything you would like to add to everything that uh, the rest of your team has just mentioned? Kaftan? Oh, we can't hear you very well. Yes. Uh... I want to say about my project. I like this idea because when you see 
some people or uh, girls is not learning, you will feel sad for them. So with our project, we can let them learn with the best types of learning that they will love. And, and how, um, Kartan and Hassan, uh, what uh, steps are you going to take to make uh, International Women's Day Hackathon in Syria happen? Are you already thinking about how this will look like? I know we're, uh, you know, a long way still um, in March, but I would really love to see more girls um, in Syria, boys and girls, all genders, uh, really come together again for a hackathon. Is this something you're making happen already? Planning, Hassan? Okay, first I want to thank you uh, for this uh, great opportunity. I'm so glad to, uh, to meet uh, such a great people. Uh, it's uh, like a dream to me, so thank you so much. Uh, actually, I'm trying to, uh, to, yeah, to make it happen. Uh, now, uh, there is some local uh, partners or maybe sponsors that I'm uh, trying to reach them and tell them about uh, the next uh, step for us and or for this event. and. Uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, I think yeah, we, we, we will be able to make it. Uh, the first problem for us is uh, the uh, required finance. Uh, so uh, to uh, to uh, have uh, fifteen uh, or half of that. Oh, we've lost you, Hassan. Uh, Hassan, you're muted if you're speaking. Um, Hassan, we, we've lost you, sorry. Um, mm. Yasmin, are you in the same area? Okay, now we can... Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. right here. Yes, he's right there. <laughs> can he come over? <laughs> okay, yeah, thank you. So uh, uh, I'm trying to, uh, to uh, uh, as I said, to find... Uh, uh, required funding uh, from uh, some uh, organizations like uh, UNDP, so uh, or any similar other uh, organization that uh, uh, can help us uh, in Syria locally. And uh, uh, also, uh, I'm trying to find the places uh, to uh, make it happen because, uh, um, as you know, uh, the internet connection is not uh, helping us and um, maybe uh, we should do it uh, uh, on site. So, uh, we Oh, Hassan, we've lost you again. Um... No, I just said he's got to find a place for 550 people to fit in. Mm. <laughs> So uh, we, we, maybe we will not be able to do it online uh, for 100%. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, we need to find the places uh, for for uh, it offline for participants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Hassan, so do you have uh, do you have enough mentors and capacity to to work with you know teenagers there? I think you mentioned you have about 40 people in your AI club already. Am I right? Yeah, uh, that's right. But not all. Oh, it's breaking up. I am. Um, you might want to unmute yourself. Maybe, maybe Hassan should be using your uh, your device instead. <laughs> Sorry, Hassan, you're just breaking up, and we can't um, hear the end of that. Ah, thank you. Okay, so can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you better now. Thank you. Ah, okay. So, uh, no, uh, not all of, uh, of them uh, will be able to, uh, let's say, act like a mentor. Uh, or or um, they, they are not able to be... Uh, um, not all of them know more about uh, data science and, let's say, um, the technical background uh, that uh, they have is not uh, what we are looking for here. So we should work on that, uh, let's say, uh, side of uh, the work. And we have to uh, help them firstly uh, take the first stage of training. And uh, uh, after that, maybe they will be able to help us. But uh, I think maybe uh, teens in AI. So... Uh, yeah, yeah, you can uh, help us with this. Um, maybe I, 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 it will be uh, really helpful to uh, to have 
provide some sessions between your uh, team and our team uh, to uh, helping them have the required uh, experience. And I think after that, maybe we will be able to have 15 uh, uh, some uh, one with our team. Yeah. I think I need a few keynote speakers on our side. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Excellent. Aaron, do you have any other questions for this incredible um, team and their mentor? Uh, not really. I, I think I just want to tell you that you're very inspiring to me. Uh, it's it's a really a pleasure to talk to you. I. I encourage you to stay with it. Um, AI really can be a very positive, transformative thing for the world, but AI reflects uh, society, right? It, it, you know, we train AI with the data uh, that that we as a world collect, and that data doesn't always represent. The views we need. It doesn't represent the, the the culture, the ethnicity, and especially the gender, right? You know, we, we we know that if we just continue the same course we are with AI, it's not going to be as as reflective uh, of the world as, as we want it to be. And so we desperately need more diversity. Uh, we need more representation in AI. Uh, it's it's especially critical, I think to get more women uh, into AI so that we've got an AI that, that's, that's inclusive, uh, right? That, that, that values all diversity. Uh, so stick with it. You're very, very inspiring to me. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Susanna, I uh, would love to hear uh, what you have to say. I know you heard so many teams pitching, you know, that demo day. Um, would you have any uh, other advice for this team uh, specifically? No, as you said, we we heard quite a lot of teams and quite a lot of projects, and I have to say it was it was hard <laughs> to decide which one was uh, the winner. But I still think that that you you deserve it, that first position, not only just the project, the way that you explain it and all the passion and all the effort that you put in it, on it. It's because um, you really saw the, the benefit of applying technology on your community and real life. And, and, and I think that's the best way to deal with technology, just trying to find uh, a real, uh, real use, real usage of, of that technology in the real world. So it's, again, as uh, Aaron was saying, it's just stick with it and, and try to find uh, the, that right path where you can apply technology to, to solve anything yet that you need to it. So, great job. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you so much. And, and team, do you have any final questions for either Aaron or Susanna? And you're muted. Uh, we're really, really gr glad that all the passion uh, came through and got to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Really, really great work. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Fantastic. Thank you thank so you. much, everyone. And thank you, Aaron, for joining us. It was mm. nice to meet you. you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susanna, for organizing. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.